Welcome to Mosky at the Movies, and thanks for watching. I'm David Moskowitz, the Mosky in Mosky at the Movies, and today's film is the Lego Batman movie by Warner Brothers, which is a spin-off from 2014's brilliant The Lego Movie. Batman is the focus of this film, fighting the usual suspects in Gotham City, getting lectured by Alfred the Butler, voiced by Ralph Fiennes, and one of the more interesting components of the film, I thought, is seeing the backstory of how Batman's sidekick and partner in crime, Robin, came into the picture, that he was adopted. Master Bruce, you need to take responsibility for your life, and it starts by raising the young orphan you adopted. It's the Batcave! Do I get a costume? Fine. I love it! I got an idea. RIP! It's better! I can only look you in the eyes right now. Gotham City is the most crime-ridden city in the world. We need to team up with Batman. After seeing the Lego movie in 2014, I couldn't wait to see this movie, knowing how snarky, edgy, and hilarious the trailer was. There was some nice pacing things going on as far as the storytelling, like scenes of exposition you'd find in full thrust features, and yes, I love the snarky pop culture humor, but I think the incessantness of it really got me. Snarky humor is good, but you've got to know when to space it out to keep it from getting tiring. But like the Lego movie from which it spawned, impressive computer drawn 3D animation mixed with stop motion photography of still sets and computer graphic effects, also were a great cast of famous voices. Will Arnett does a very straight up job in a deep resonant voice as Batman. Michael Cera voices Robin, Rosario Dawson as the Batgirl, Zach Galifianakis as the Joker, and Conan O'Brien as the Riddler. I give this film three Moskies. And now, for your thoughts. I have seen it three times. <laughs> One of the reasons why it's resonated with me so much is that I've been an engineer for 30 years. I had no idea these women ex even existed until I went, until they, actually until the movie went into production. So I'm very proud of them, proud to be a part of that legacy. I'm going to see it again next month. <laughs> I can't wait to buy it. I thought it was a beautiful film. I, I mean, people either loved it or they hated it, and I think that's the sign of a good movie. If everybody loves it, then you're probably not doing something right. Now, my oldie but goodie is the absolutely brilliant, original, and innovative Lego movie, which came out in 2014. An ordinary Lego construction worker, thought deemed to be a prophet by the Lego world citizenry, based on the things he does, tries to stop an evil, unknown force from gluing the Lego people and objects and remaining frozen. Good morning, apartment. Ready to start the day. Jumping jacks, hit them. One, two, three. I am so pumped up. Yes, overpriced coffee. That's $37. Awesome. Everything is awesome. Oh my gosh, I love this song. Is cool. The Lego movie was so brilliant and original and innovative using Lego pieces to tell a story with stop motion photography mixed with computer drawn 3D computer animation and graphics interweaving a cohesive and entertaining and humorous story is mind blowing to see in 2014. That's why it was nothing special, sorry Warner Brothers, to see the Lego Batman movie. Plus the Lego movie had a message to do whatever it takes to control your own destiny instead of letting outside forces control you. The awesome live action ending revealing Will Ferrell and his kids playing with the Lego set and the hilarious but trivious godlike character voice by Morgan Freeman that makes the construction worker and the audience think that there's a higher power in the Lego universe. Just like there is on Earth, I also couldn't get enough of the earworm theme song, Everything is Awesome. All in all, this film got robbed by the Academy to not get nominated for a Best Animation Picture. But I did give the 2014 The Lego Movie five Moskies. Now it's time for Rumor Has It, my dish to you of what's buzzing around the water coolers of Film Nation. Yo, movie peeps, would you pay 30 bucks to see first-run movies in your home seven days after the release in the theater? A well, variety reports that seven Hollywood movie studios have been mulling over the idea of video on demand, or VOD, in industry parlance, 
in the past year, some studies have come up with 50 bucks a pop to download a first-run movie in your home. 30 bucks, the studios found, seems to be the threshold to part people from their money. As part of the deal, theater chains would get a cut from the early digital downloads. Right now, it takes a new film 90 days from the theater release date before you can download it. And there's still a lot of details to be ironed out with, uh, between the studios and the theaters as well. Now for our upcoming segment called Coming Attractions, where I review the trailer of a buzzworthy upcoming film. No surprise, the trailer for this particular film has already clocked in at 10 million views. It's Despicable Me 3 from Universal Pictures, starring the voices of Steve Carell, Kristen Wiig, and Trey Parker. He's the co-creator of South Park. Part 2 came out four years ago in 2013, and the original Despicable Me came out in 2010. Hard to believe it's been seven years. In the Despicable Me 3 trailer, a guy named Gru gets fired for not capturing a guy named Paul Taser Brad, who's a 1980s child star turned jewel thief, who wears a purple zoot suit, has a mullet, and moonwalks like Michael Jackson. And some butler type tells Gru that he has a twin brother he's never met. That is rich and hence can't wait to meet him. But meeting the arrogant, cocky, and sarcastic brother is a letdown until the brother asks Gru to get in a costume to pull off another heist, which supposedly, what, what I gleaned from this trailer, is in keeping with a family tradition. I can't wait to meet my brother. Yeah. What's the difference between me and you? Who doesn't love this guy? Look at him. Oh, his hair would make you better. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh, he's so mad. What's the difference between me and you? You must be the beautiful wife. Oh, stop it. I loved every morsel about this trailer. Finally, a trailer that has a clear cut story, a clearly defined villain, good guy, and a mission. The animation and nuanced movements of the characters is outstanding and realistic looking. And the edgy and hilarious storyline by Kevin Dario is terrific, as is the, the direction. Oh, and that rap song by Pharrell that sounds like DMX bouncing under the action of this trailer is truly a guilty pleasure. And I can't wait to see this film. And those lovable yellow minions again. I give the Despicable Me 3 trailer five Moskies. And of course, I'll give y'all a full review of the film when it comes out on June 30th. In the meantime, please check out both Despicable Me 3 trailers on our two websites, moskiatthemovies.com and on comingattractions.online. Thanks again for watching Mosky at the Movies. See you again real soon. Take care.